Well, good morning, everybody. Good to see you. I'm glad we have some children here today because we're going to have a message up here today. So just come up and, and join us. Not at, not, at, not at this moment, but I'll call you up, okay? Well, it's good to be with you today. Uh, may God's uh, blessing attend our worship. And God has given us another day to uh, rejoice and be glad in it. This is a day the Lord has made. Amen. Well, we have an announcement this morning uh, to share with you. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I wanted to let everybody know how things went with Pastor Kramer. Uh, we had a good visit on Monday and Tuesday. He spent quite a bit of time with us, and I do want to thank those that helped put together the luncheon on, on Monday. We had the church council, the call committee, and elders, and a few other people were there for that. A lot of people got to meet him. Uh, he said when he left, he would let us know pretty quickly, and he did. He called yesterday, and he has declined the call. So once again, we are back uh, looking for candidates. We have exhausted the list that we got from Pastor Moore our district president, so we will be asking him for another list of names to go through. And if anybody has a candidate that they want us to uh, check into, go ahead and uh, let us know. But uh, once again, God has said this is not the time. He's not the man, so we'll wait till he tells us we have the right one. Thank you very much. Okay, you all heard the uh, message and I'm sure we, we can get very disappointed at times, and it's been a while since we've uh, been in this process. But you know, God has that person, that pastor, picked out for us, really does. And we just have to catch up with him and, and uh, recognize uh, who that is, and by God's grace, he will be here. So... Uh, Day by day with Jesus and day by day with uh, uh, God's blessing of uh, commitment to serve him and to grow the church of which he's made us a part. So again, our prayers uh, certainly are with him and his church and his uh, family and also, of course, uh, with us. And so we begin a new journey again. Isn't it good to get up in the morning and start a new journey? Oh, boy, don't get weary. <laughs> because uh, the best, truly the best is yet to come. We know that. We know that in our own lives, don't we? Truly. Okay, so God be with us this morning in worship. Uh, it's not by coincidence that the theme for today is standing firm. Okay? Standing firm. Let's stand and greet each other. Oh, I'm sorry. One more announcement. Blood pressure check in Luther room after 815 service. Got it. Please stand. You're standing pretty firm. Yes, I am. Aren't you? Yes, doing okay. <laughs> You're doing good. Hi, guys. Good to see you. Morning. Good to see you guys. I'll see you in a little bit, okay? Morning. Morning, morning. 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 I think I saw your mom come in. She's over there. Okay. I... Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you.
We begin our worship on page 184 in the forepart of your hymnal. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to God on high. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God who has made us, saved us, and created us as your own children, renew us, feed us, and strengthen us, that we may in all confidence proclaim your eternal goodness and grace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the Scriptures. Our reading today from the Old Testament 
is from Deuteronomy chapter 4. Now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and just decrees that I am teaching you, and do them, that you may live and go in and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. You shall not add to the word that I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you. Keep them and do them, for that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us? Whenever we call upon him, and what great nation is there that has statutes and just decrees so righteous as all this law that I set before you today? Only take care and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. This is the word of the Lord. Be the epistle is from Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all, to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. This is the word of the Lord. Seventh chapter, verse 14. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside of a, per a person that by going into him can defile him, but the things that come out of the person are what defile him. And when he had entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, <clears throat> Then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the person from the outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart but his stomach and is expelled? Thus he declared all food is clean. And he said, What comes out of a person is what defiles him from within. Out of the heart of a man comes evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these things come from within, and they defile a person. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We join together now in confessing our holy Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to ask our children to come up this morning and see me. There they come. Oh boy, they're very, very courageous. Is there any children over here? Oh, you're all children over here. I guess. Dad can come up if he wants. They can just set up here. We can all be together. Yeah. What's up right here? There's a little seat for you. Okay, great. So, how are you guys today? Pretty good? Good? Can you tell me your name? What's your first name? Adeline. 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 Ooh, that's a pretty name. Uh, Bowie. Bowie. Okay. Bowie and Adeline. Did you, did you know these little guys here? Okay. Well, we're happy to see you today that you've come to worship in God's house, the church. I'm going to ask you to do something for me. Would you stand up by me? Here, take my hand. Come on over here. Okay. You guys stand right here, kind of side by side, okay? All righty. Okay, if I'm, I'm going to stand behind you. Are you standing pretty strong? Are you, you feel like you're okay? <laughs> what's, ha what's happening? What am I doing? Pushing you? Do you ever push each other? You probably don't push each other. <laughs> but you know, we think we're standing pretty strong. I'm not going to let you fall. Somebody pushes you. Mm. It's kind of hard, isn't it? Be pushed. Oh, boy. You can't just really stand very strong if somebody's pushing you. You're okay now. Things are going okay for you, aren't they? You feel strong? Go like this. Feel strong. Hey, okay. We feel like that at times, don't we? Hey, I'm doing okay. I'm strong, right? And then something happens. I'm pushing you, but in our other, in really in our lives, things happen around us that can cause us to stumble and to fall. And we're not going to have you do that today. But that's hard. It's hard to stand alone, isn't it? So we're going to have Dad stand up. You didn't know you were getting involved in this, did you? Okay, you hold on to your children like that. Okay? Now if I come up here, and I'm going to try to push you over, what's Dad doing? Huh? Holding you what? Holding you up? Well, you know what? That's what God does in our life. He holds us up. When we're going to fall, he's there to catch us, right? Did that feel good that Dad caught you? Oh, boy, yeah, that did, okay. Well, that's what God does in our life all the time. Jesus is with us, not just when we stumble like on the ground, but when things come into our life that make us sad, that make us want to feel bad, God is there to hold us up and to set us on a right path again. Amen? Amen. Okay, take Dad's hand, each of you, and go back to your seats. See, that's what God does for us. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's join together in singing the sermon hymn.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the presence of God's Holy Spirit grant us faith and peace and love. Amen. You know, that was just amazing, that children's message. Thank you so much, Mom and Dad. And gosh, guys. I didn't exactly know what was going to develop this morning. And it all worked out so wonderfully. Dad coming up, and it was a good illustration, wasn't it, of how God's hand of blessing is in our lives. Even in the smallest things. We look for great and monstrous and overpowering things to see God. And we want to see Him there. But He's in the smallest and sometimes most insignificant things of life. This morning, by God's grace and the power of His Spirit, we're praying together that God would enable us to remember His Word to be with us, save us, deliver us, forgive us, and secondly, that He never leaves us. What about that epistle reading this morning? Put on the full armor of God! Woo! That's powerful. Sounds like we're involved in a battle. Well, we are. We are. And the devil and the world and our sinful fallen nature, it's all about how we become vulnerable. Pastor declined a call. Oh, man. We're a mess. Nobody loves us. <laughs> Not true. Not true. You see, God is always preparing and equipping and reminding us that His will will be done and it will be good for us. Does anybody here need patience? Oh boy, do we need patience, right? Patience. Wait on the Lord. And the psalmist says what? And He will raise you up in due time. In other words, God's going to be there to fill you, to fulfill you. Always. The theme I've chosen today, standing firm, I kind of shared it with the children this morning. Quick illustration or, or example here. Have any of you been to either of the oceans, the Atlantic, maybe the Pacific, and have gone down to the shore, you know, where the breakers crash in? Have you ever? See, see your hand if you've done that, okay? Wasn't that exciting? Um, you love to hear the breakers, you know, crash onto the shore. And maybe if you were bold and courageous, you thought, eh, maybe you didn't have your swimming suit on, but you, you still, you, maybe you pulled up your slacks or your pants or whatever. You said, I'm going to walk out into that and just stand on those wonderful, that wonderful shoreline there and wade out a little bit. What happens? Somebody tell me what happens. Now, we're talking about breakers coming in. You lose your balance. What, what, in losing your balance, what happens? Well, the waves, for one thing, are pushing you, aren't they, as they break into... And the other thing is, what about where you're standing? Whew. Yeah, it removes the sand, yeah. How do you make it? How do you stand firm? Well, I, when I was to the... Uh, Pacific Ocean a few years ago out by uh, uh, San Francisco. Not in San Francisco, but around it. I saw a lot of people. They weren't standing very well. They went out and thought they could. Strong, big, muscular guys like Jack Wilcox. <laughs> I can do this. And what happened? Boom. 
And in some cases, it was a little scary. Things look beautiful, but we have to be careful. That's like temptation, isn't it? Things look beautiful, but we have to be careful. In Christ, the solid rock, we stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Boy, that's a great example, isn't it, of trying to stand up. I can do it. How many of you hear that so often, that phrase? I can do it. I can do it. Maybe your spouse says it. I can do it. I can do it. My spouse says it. I can do it. I can do it. And I go, well, maybe we can't do it. Maybe we can't. Maybe it's a struggle to stand firm, not just by the ocean shore, but what about in our own personal lives? What about as we face the devil, the world, and our own sinful nature? You know, devil's temptations, the world and its fallen nature, and our own inability to focus, to focus on God's word and promise. You know what I heard this morning when, this was, when we announced, the uh, pastor said, no. Oh. Man, I heard a big, sad, whoa. Well, I know you're disappointed. But you know, that's how, it, that's how life gets us down too, isn't it? We don't, we don't, we hope and pray for this to happen. We want this to happen so badly. We, 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 I, I, I. What's the problem here? What's the problem? What's the word? Amen. I told them this morning, this is the amen section. So I want to go like this. Amen. Got it? Okay. Oh, that's, what? That's the weakest amen I've ever heard. Okay. Now, when I preach next time, you'll be the amen section. Are you looking forward to it? Okay, good. What does amen mean? Shall be so. God's, yeah. Amen means, yes, God, you're going you're gonna to do this. It's going to be according to your will. It's for your purpose and it's for our good. <laughs> but we struggle to remember that, don't we? We do. We lose a loved one through death. Very sad. But for the loved one, what? Victory. Jesus. Heavenly throne. Amen? Amen. Yes. But for us, it's hard. It's a loss. God reminds us that the ultimate good from His hand is better, right? The ultimate good from in hand is better. So this morning, just briefly, as we stand firm, or we think we do, we need to take a quick look at our own strength. Secondly, we need to recognize there's spiritual conflict that we are dealing with in life. And thirdly, and this is an Easter theme, but it's, I, I, I wish I could preach on this every Sunday. Our victory is in Jesus. Amen. This is fun. <laughs> I got to do this. Jack, you got to? Okay, thank you. <laughs> our victory is in Jesus. Is it not? Yes, it's our, that's our victory. We're weak. We are weak and He is strong. Yes, there's no question about it. God says that very directly in His Word. You're weak. You're not going to be able to deal with all the aspects of life, the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's going it's to be difficult. It's going to be hard. But that's why I'm here for you. Just like Dad was here for the children when, you know, they were being pushed and shoved and held them securely. That's God holding us securely. Right? I pray this morning you sense that secure love of God in your heart and in your life. I do. 
We need that. We can't go on without it. The waves, <laughs> the undercurrent, the sinking sand, boy, those, that's life, isn't it? I can do this. I can stand up against this sin and temptation. I can do it. I can deal with disappointment. I can, I, 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 and then all of a sudden things begin to collapse. And it's at that time, and all these eyes happen, we become most vulnerable. Because Satan then jumps in and says, where's God? I thought God really, I thought God really loved you. What's, what's, he doesn't really love you, does he? Boy, that sounds like Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, doesn't it? Remember Satan's temptation? Did God put that tree in the midst of the garden? Yep. That should have already been a clue right there, shouldn't it? No question about what God did, but the question is, did he? And then, the, then that dastardly, evil temptation, well, he just did that because he doesn't want you to be like him. You see, you don't need God. You don't need him. You need him. I need him. We all need him. But that was the temptation. I can do this alone. I can go alone in my life. I can handle any adversity. Just give me a chance. I'm strong. Not really. We're only kidding ourselves. This past week, I uh, came across, uh, I don't know where I was at, it was at the grocery store someplace, and there, you know, people have their little, little business cards, you know, they lay them out on the table. You probably have you know, do that, business cards. And this person's name, and I didn't know the name, of course, but the, the, under the name was Life Coach. I went, hmm, I think I know what that means. It's somebody who you can go to who can give you good advice, hopefully, on diet, exercise, mental acuity, uh, focusing on being the positive and not the negative. Uh, you know, just kind of overall what? Overall healthy body, mind, you know? Who's our life coach? God is our life coach, right? God's our life coach, and He comes to us directly and personally through His Holy Spirit to empower us and to direct us and to pick us up when we fall and to hold us firmly when the winds and the sand, you know, the sand sinks and the winds blow. And boy, we've all had those experiences, haven't we? Maybe some of you have just come through a pretty tough time when the winds have been pretty strong and the sand is you know, not secure. Maybe you've had that happen. And by God's grace, hopefully someone around you has reminded you God's in control. And all things work together for good to those who love Him. We love God. What does that mean, love God? That means what? Depend on Him. Trust in Him. Not, not just believing like there's a God, but really know that He is the, the Lord and Savior of our life, that He has given His life, that we can have life. Right? Our strength fails us. God's strength strengthens us. Psalm 33, I came across this in preparing today, and I wanted to read a sort of portion of this. Psalm 33, no king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Despite all of its great strength, it cannot save. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, who love him, who trust in him. And those who hope in his unfailing love. He will deliver them 
and keep them alive. Keep them connected to Him. Right? Whether in life or in death, death's but a door. Got to remember that. It's not an eternal hold, but it's a door to life. Do you think we put our, our hope in the size of armies and our strength and um, all of that? I think we do. And it's all in vain. It, it might be momentary. There might be some momentary, ah, made it, I've su- you know, succeeded, I've, I've overcome this. But again, we get the I involved rather than God. And He's the one who brings us through. We cannot rely on our own strength. The most healthy and strong person can what? Can succumb to any kind of accident, disease, illness, and death, right? I mean, there's no, there's no human way in a strength kind of way to succeed. It takes God. Because we're involved in a spiritual a spiritual struggle. Paul says in Ephesians 6, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. In other words, our struggle isn't just against people. But what? He talks about those who rule over us, who have authority over us, who, who have power in the dark world, the spiritual forces of evil. Wow! I mean, it's like an infant trying to stand up against an overwhelming adversary of power. We, it's, it's impossible. We're going to cave. We're, and we, we know that. We have our moments, don't we? Do we all have our moments of darkness? We, we all have our moments of... Where's God? We all have our moments. Uh, must be my fault. Uh, you know, we all have our moments. And sometimes we get pretty close to even giving up, and sometimes we do. But do you know who never gives up? God. I primed them this morning. Oh, he didn't say amen, too. God never gives up. You guys aren't going to want to sit here next time, are you? That's your seat, though. Yeah, I know. That's your seat. God never gives up. God's always there. We give up? Yeah, God never gives up. We say it's over, God says what? It's not over. It's not over till it's over, and I make that decision, not in terms of my relationship with you, but in terms of this earthly battle. Remember Paul's words to Timothy at the sort of at the closure of his life, Paul's life. He says, I fought the good fight. I finished the course. I've kept the faith. And henceforth is laid up for me the crown of righteousness. In other words, heaven's my home. That's why Paul can say in his earthly life, you know, for me... uh, for me to live as Christ and to die is even better because it's gain. It's, it's, it's what all of this life is all about. Getting ready for heaven. As God intended it for the very beginning of His creation of the world. No more evil. No more sin. No more darkness. And no more death. Wow! Is it any, can things get any better? No. That's the best. But in the meantime, we know the outcome. We know the, we know the final day and, and where we'll be eternally. But in the meantime, there's a battle and there's a struggle. And we need to recognize that. And we don't always get what we pray for or what we want. Uh, maybe it's the calling of a pastor and that doesn't work out or for some strange reason, whatever. Or maybe it's a promotion, or maybe it's a, I should be healing better, (laughs) or something should happen faster. Why, Why can't it? We have all kinds of questions in life. 
devil is like a roaring lion, says Peter. Wants to devour us. The sinking sand, the waves, the pressure we all experience in our life. The devil's saying, come down with me. Jesus is saying, I have you in my hand. I have you in my hand. Even living in this chaotic world we live in, I mean, some of you are near my age. I won't ask you how old you are, but some of you are older than me. Um, um, I have a tendency in my life to say this. I don't know about you guys, but I think of this often. Life seemed to be so better and much more simpler when I was a child growing up. I guess maybe all of us would feel that way. Yeah. We didn't see as clearly as we see now. But we know Jesus talks about it, doesn't he? There's all kinds of convoluted uh, behavior and violence and uh, you know, such conflict over against God's word and his commands. I mean, Jesus talks about it. He says, you know, it's all going to, it's around us. Uh, it, it's, it's not going to leave us. We're, we're in a battle, but we've already won. We've already won. Oh, come on. There we go. This is called an interactive sermon. And you have to respond. Okay. Amen. Yeah. So be it. Our victory is in Jesus. That's how we stand firmly against all the adversity in life. Ephesians 6.10, be strong, what? In the Lord and in His mighty power. Boy, that's, that's something. Maybe we could memorize that from time. You know, just kind of bring that back in our memory. My strength is in the Lord and His mighty power. Maybe we have to say that again and again in our life. My strength is not in myself, but in the Lord and His mighty power. Thank you, Jesus. We put on the full armor of God. The flesh is willing, what? The, the spirit is willing, rather, but the flesh is weak. We struggle with the good that we want to do. We don't seem to be able to do the evil that we don't want to do. We seem to keep on doing, Lord, forgive me, but thank you for saving me. Wow. Where do you stand? A number of years ago, final story here. My daughter, my youngest daughter, was uh, oh, about four years old. And you know, as parents, parents, oh, we're going to go over here and we're going to look at parents. Do you sort of know where your children are most of the time? I mean, even if you don't see them, you know they're in that room or, you know. They don't ever leave your, your mind or heart, do they? I mean, you just, you know that. Well, my youngest daughter was out in the yard. I was working, and I got pretty intense in what I was doing. And, I, and she, you know, she could obviously run and walk and, you know, do everything. And I, I turned my attention away from her just for, it seemed like just maybe a minute or two because I was so engrossed I was planting something. Got too intense, you know. And I turned around and she was gone <clears throat> in the backyard. So I ran into the house and I said to my wife, where's Julie? And she said, I thought she was with you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That really panic. And so my son, I said, there's a, there was a lake not too far from us, a pond. And I thought, oh man, I hope she's not headed there. So he ran down on his, or got on his bike and went there. My wife and I went all over the neighborhood you know, shouting her name. Finally, my son comes back with his sister. And she was all happy and smiles. How do you think I felt? I was a wreck. You know, you have that feeling you're so happy, but then you're so upset because why did this happen? And you know what she said to me? She said, Daddy, she said, I stopped 
I looked and I listened. Now that's something we had taught her about when you come up to a street to cross it. Stop, look, and listen. And I thought about that today. Where do we stand? How do we stand? How can we be secure in the Lord and know that His strength and His power are, are for us and with us? Stop, look, and listen. Stop, pay attention to where we are. What's happening to me? What's happening around me? What are my thoughts? Why, why is this going on? And then look. Look into God's Word. Be reminded of His promises. And then listen. Listen to what His promises say. I am with you always. Come to me and I'll give you rest. Oh, those are so important. So important, aren't they? That's what enables us to stand amidst the sinking sand and the pounding ways of life in Jesus alone. Amen? Amen. Amen. You'll get your chance next time. And all God's people said, Amen. Okay, let's stand and sing. may be seated as we now gather our offerings today for the greater extension of God's kingdom in us and through us. We give Thee but Thine own, O Lord, whatever the gift may be. All that we have is Thine, O Lord, a trust from Thee. Accept these gifts for Jesus' sake. Amen. Let us stand for prayer. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, what a privilege and blessing it is to call You Father. For You have created us and You have recreated us in Your Son, Jesus. We are members of Your family. Members one another. We have been called out in this world to be in it,
but be for You. For Your kingdom and for the salvation brought and won by Jesus, Your Son, for the world. Oh Lord, today we lift our hearts and we pray. We talk to You. We share with You not only our own personal concerns that we have, and we have many. We pray for ourselves it's, that You would grant us strength and, and give us power and help us to forgive and, and help us to see Your hand more clearly in our life. For that is truly a blessing for us as we know that You lead us and that You guide us. Lord, we also pray today for others, for those who are in need of spiritual healing and care, for physical healing and care. And there are so many friends and neighbors and congregational members. Lord, we lift them before You now in prayer this moment. Fathers, we also thank You for the opportunity to visit with and share Your work with Pastor Kramer over these past few days. We accept Your will for him and for us. And Lord, we pray that we've together learned and grown together in, in depending on You more and more for all that we have and all that we are. We pray for continued blessing and guidance to our call committee here at Our Savior we know, Lord, that You know the pastor who will be here at that one day of Your choosing. Help us to keep our eyes focused on Your Word, Your promise, and continue to do Your work and serve You. For we are all members of the priesthood of all believers. Help us to carry Your Word, Your love, forgiveness, and hope to all those around us. And bless this week ahead as we busy ourselves, hopefully, with your business, the work of the Gospel of Jesus. Grant us that peace and that blessing today. In Jesus' name, amen. We join our hearts now together in the words that our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Be to God. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. What has now been so?